In this video, we're going to learn how we can use keyboard input to move an element around on the screen. So instead of tying the movement of our player to the mouse, we're now going to use keyboard movement to handle it. So we're going to look at a couple of things here that we need to do. Um, first, so we can leave this, that's all good to go. Uh, we don't really need to display the text anymore. We'll be displaying some other text on screen. So I am just going to comment that out. Once again, if we run our project, we can see we have these two elements. Now, I'm going to make them a little bit smaller and start preparing us as we're going to be moving into uh, image sprite uh, tile based universe. So we'll start using tile maps and working with things that way. So what I want to do is shrink everything down. So we're working with these 32 by 32 size elements that ties nicely into developing sprite based artwork using texture atlases. And if these words don't mean a lot to you yet, as the project expands and grows, we're going to learn how we can do a lot more with them. Okay, so what we need to do, just gonna make some space here, is we need to track when we press a key. We also will need to track when we release a key. And turns out there is a built-in method inside of processing called key pressed. So you can go read about it in the help documents, but the key thing is that event will be registered and when it is registered, what it is going to do is it's going to give us a numerical code, a number, a key code for which key has been pressed. So first off, I'm just going to uh, set a color and then we'll just put our text size at 24 and finally I am going to display that and that key code is a camel cased element so one word but the C in code is capitalized so when I press the key, I want it to display that key code and we'll just put it at 50, 50. All right, so now if we run this, if I press a key on the keyboard, now it flashes very quickly, so it's hard to see. And it's flashing based on our key repeat rate. Now each number key, or each not number key, each character on the keyboard has a specific key code that is associated with that. Um, actually, so we can keep it on screen a little bit easier. To get our text to show up on screen a little bit easier instead of doing it in the key press, but we are going to have to track that. We're going to instead just put this inside of our function so we don't need it down here. Now, if we run it, let's we'll see, when I press a key, each key has a value associated with it. Shift to 16, return key is 10, A is 65. But the four keys we really care about are the arrow keys. So my left arrow key is 37, my up arrow key is 38, my right arrow key is 39, down arrow is 40. So if we're using these, 37, 38, 39, 40, we're going to clockwise circle around the arrow keys. So again, left is 37, up is 38, right is 39, down is 40. So those are the values that we care about as we're going to do this. Now, you can go look up these codes and what it is is ASCII character codes. 
that's what the codes are. So if you forget what the numbers are, you can write a simple thing to print out the key code when you type it, or you can go look up a character code chart. That's another way that you can accomplish it. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to use something that is similar to an if statement, and it's called a switch statement, just because it's a little cleaner when we're writing this. Because we could write another if, else if breakdown. So I can do if my key code is going to be, you know, again, a couple returns, go here at this point. So, oh, sorry, I forgot if my key code is 37, then that means left is true. So what we want to do though is, instead of always later on, our player is gonna say, hey, what, what is the current key code? But we don't really care about all the keys. All we really care about is if one of those arrow keys is pressed. So we're going to add a couple variables here. There'll be booleans, and we'll do this as left, right, well, we'll go in the same circle, left, up, right, down. Now, we give them values, left equals false, up equals false, right equals false, and finally down equals false. So we want to set those to true and when it's true then the player is going to move based on what is there. So if my key code is 37 then I can just simply go left is equal to true. And then we can go else if key code is equal to 38, then you will remember that that means up is equal to true. Else if key code is equal to 39, right is equal to true, and finally else if and we don't just do else because we have all the other keys on the keyboard that we could possibly press, so we definitely don't want to do that. And then it would be down is equal to true. And finally close that out. So now we have our simple items here as we are pressing it not doing anything with it yet. And that's where we're going to then modify what happens inside of our player. So instead of updating our X and Y based on the mouse, we're going to update our player based on what is happening here. So what we can say is if left, so if I just say if left, that's the same as saying if left is true. And then, oh, we're gonna need some additional values here because we want to animate this. So I'll just put on a new line so it's easier to remember. So we can do speed X or, uh, I'm going to shorten it this time and just use VX and VY. These are going to be my velocities in the X or the Y direction. That's just less typing than using speed x and speed y. So if left, vx is going to now be set to, so we're not gonna have acceleration, we're just going to automatically go to a value and I'll just say something like four. All right, now we can repeat this four times. So I like to do my left and rights and then my ups and downs just because then I'm going VX is there. So, oh, but VX going left requires a negative value. Then it's up 
and down, and it's not bx, it is of course y, so it's by. Up is going to be with a negative value as well. So now we've set those. Then finally, what we need to do is go x plus equals bx, y plus equal vy. Let's see what happens here. So we can see it's moving. Whoa, okay, I lost it. I don't know where I am anymore, and it's gone. So we've got a few issues that we have to work out here. One is that when I let go of a key, I want it to stop moving. Well, turns out we have, just like we have key pressed, we also have a key released. And now this time I want to say false, 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 false. So now we're tracking when I let go of a key. That's good. But we have a kind of two more situations that we need to take care of. So after left and right, we want to say if not left, meaning left is equal to false. So we say not, and we do that with an exclamation mark. So if not, so if left is false and right is false, at that point, we want our vx to be equal to zero. Not double zero, just single zero. And same thing on our y's. If not up and not down, you know, I'm not pressing up and I'm not pressing down, I want my vy to be equal to zero, not 90, zero. Now let's try this again. So I let go, stops. So we do kind of have some diagonal movement here. In a future installment, we will clean up our movement so we're only moving in a single possible direction. But right now, I can press the key and as I work through the arrow keys, my sprite is animating. So this is good. But we do have a few other kind of contingencies that we have to address on this. So when we're moving, let's just look one more time. If I press left and then I press right, it's going right. Now if I press left again, nothing happens. I press up, press down, it goes down, but if I'm pressing down and press up, nothing happens. So what we want to do is go, if we're pressing left and not right, then we want to move. If we're pressing right and not left, now let's see how that works. So I'm going right and now when I press the other key, nothing happens until I let go. So it doesn't reverse until I let go of my current direction. So I think that's better because then we don't get caught up on, well, which one did we check last? Because otherwise, it will do this if, and then it will do this one afterward. So I'm just going to put a little comment in here to make it easier. This is our horizontal stuff. And this is our vertical stuff. So once again, if I press up and not down, if I press down and not up, then it does this. And if I'm pressing neither, it kills my speed. Okay, now let's try again. Up, okay, down, and now I press up and nothing's happening. Perfect. So now it's behaving how I want. So keyboard movement is fairly straightforward. Now, right now I used an if statement and I did hint that I was gonna show a different way of doing it. And that method is another way of writing 
an if kind of structure and it's referred to as a switch statement. So what I do is I say switch, I don't know if I can spell it right, and I'm switching based on key code and then I'll put in and switch so we have it there. So what switch has instead of all these curly braces that you have to make sure you have a left one and a right one and it's all balanced. Instead, what we do is we just go, okay, so in the case of, so we say case and then I'll say what the case of what. So in my key code, in the case of the key code being 37, then what I want to do is go left is equal to true. And then I don't want to check anything further because now that one made me happy. So then I can just say break. Then we'll go case 38. We know 38 was up. So up is now equal to true. And then once again, break. And then case 39. And you'll remember 39 is right is now equal to true and finally case 40 and that will be down is equal to true. Now if I auto format that so we get some nice indents happening you will see and for some reason in switch statements the indent is always kind of like a one off from what I would prefer so we'll clean that up. So here I have curly braces and I have to make sure I get all the right curly braces and right now here we'll go and if a switch statement when we look at it just has the one set of curly braces and now I would argue is a little bit cleaner to read. Oh I forgot to put in my breaks here. You have to remember the syntax of it. If else ifs are easier because it's just curly braces repeating but here it's a little bit messier to remember the syntax, but if you are now tracking, say you're doing a much more complex kind of thing, you have movement keys, you have different hotkeys for actions a character would take. So it could pick up an item, drop an item, use an item, attack, block, duck, jump, shoot, all of these extra key codes. If you're stacking all of that into an if else if statement, that starts to get really ugly. And a switch statement is just going to be cleaner. So you can decide which one you want, but normally when I'm working on a keyboard based structure, I gravitate towards using a switch statement instead of using if else if statements. But it's up to you to decide how you want to go about doing it. But moving forward, I'm going to leave mine in the switch context because I'm very likely going to have additional keys that I'll be tracking as this project evolves. So I would rather use the switch. So we'll leave it commented now. Down the road, we'll probably just delete it out of there. And to make sure I didn't mess anything up, it's always a good idea to practice, or practice, but try it out, run your program, and make sure that the keys are responding as you expect. So good luck and have fun.